This week in Jamaica Now, arrested more than a dozen current and former workers of a leading Jamaican manufacturing company are nabbed in a multi-million dollar fraud. Lawmakers contemplate banning sharing photos of deceased persons and crash victims online. Silence broken. St. Elizabeth Police Commander speaks after one of his cops is caught threatening a citizen. Oh, yeah, check them in. And shock and grief. A young doctor whose story of resilience captured Jamaican hearts last year has died. I'm Jovan Johnson and this is Jamaica Now. Manufacturing conglomerate Separate Group has painted a picture of betrayal after 17 of its current and former employees were arrested this week in connection with a $160 million fraud case. Deputy Commissioner of Police DCP Fitzbailey says 13 other employees who are wanted in the case are on the run. 14 of the 17 employees in custody have been charged with several crimes. CEO of Separate Richard Pandoy says he was very disappointed that workers exploited systems weakened by a fire in October 2021 that disrupted the company's operations. According to him, the company maintained its staff, although it could have cut numbers. Why that hurt so much? Well, because it occurred in, that, in, in, a, in an entity that we're, we're suffering and, and recovering from the biggest blow in our organization we've ever had. Yes. Um, you know, you just in, in my mind, and I even thought that I'm behind every one of our people in the worst of time. Yes. You know, it will have been reciprocated as we build back together, right? And um, just to know that people were <laughs> actively taking advantage of a situation to that extent, yeah, I was very disappointed. I think that. You know, the money is big, but that's part hurt in the most, you know? Now, DCP Bailey says the 17 detained current and former employees, whose ages range from 26 to 52 years old, were apprehended over the past two days during a series of coordinated police operations in Kingston, St. Andrew, Clarendon, and St. Catherine. The investigation discovered that two IT employees manipulated the computer system to facilitate 24 other employees and those are root sales driver and assistants who participated in the fraud by collecting goods from separate group of company warehouses on behalf of van sales department and subsequently sold the goods and kept the proceeds. This occurred on several occasions over the period of October 2021 and May 2022. The charges against the 14 in custody are embezzlement, conspiracy to defraud, access with intent to commit or facilitate the commission of offences under the Cybercrimes Act, engaging in a transaction that involves criminal property, and conspiracy to engage in a transaction that involves criminal property. They are scheduled to appear in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on May 22. And five employees from the Burger King branch in Harborview, Kingston, have been charged in relation to the alleged fraud in which nearly $10 million is said to have been swindled from the restaurant. They are 39-year-old supervisor Camelia Wisdom and four cashiers, 36-year-old Terian O'Haro, 22-year-old Astia Mitchell, 39-year-old Sharon Williams, and 21-year-old Christina Lewis. They have been charged with larceny as a servant, conspiracy to defraud, and engaging in a transaction involving criminal property. The police say between December 2022 and March 2023, the employees stole an undetermined sum of money from the restaurant. They are scheduled to appear in the Kingston and St. Andrew Parish Court on May 12. The recently launched reform of Jamaica's constitution will not touch on issues related to abortion and gay rights. That's the declaration from Information Minister Robert Morgan on Wednesday. He was responding to concerns from some Christian lobbies about the membership of Canadian Professor Richard Albert on the Constitutional Reform Committee. The, the issue that consumes the conversation is not a matter that is being contemplated by the government. Um, the government has ne not articulated that this constitutional reform process will disturb such wide ranges of issues. Our intention, as articulated by the Prime Minister, is pretty much to focus on the Republic status of Jamaica. In, in bringing the committee together, the government was very cognizant of getting the views of a wide cross-section, including the church. And I don't suspect that any 
as the church may contemplate, or as this particular representative of the church may contemplate, that there will be anyone who can dominate a debate or a conversation on the committee, because give credit to those on the committee, they are very strong individuals of intellect, competence, and consequence. Um, so I just generally, not speaking specifically to that individual, um, Jamaicans can be assured that the committee was formed in the best interest of our society. Professor Albert, who is the only non-Jamaican on the committee, is a leading global expert on constitutions. But some local religious groups expressed concerns about what they claim was Professor Albert's distinct pro-LGBT and pro-abortion bias. Jamaican lawmakers reviewing the Cyber Crimes Act 2015 have signaled their intention to insert a provision making it illegal for persons to post online graphic images of the dead and those who suffer serious injuries in accidents. Social media vloggers and other users occasionally post shocking videos and images of the aftermath of crime and accident scenes online to the upset of many who complain that such actions are repulsive and unfeeling. Opposition legislator Julian Robinson raised the issue on Wednesday during a meeting of a parliamentary committee reviewing the cybercrimes law. The image could cause great distress mm -hmm. to the family members and others of somebody who would don't even know their family member is in an accident. The person is um, in a state which, you know, they wouldn't want to be seen. And an action could possibly be taken by either that person if they're still alive or a family member. We need an area to treat with that because that is an area that concerns has been raised by the public in terms of the unfortunate transmission of such events. And maybe if we can find a way to capture that elsewhere, outside of the definition of intimate, um, we may want to consider it. Committee Chairman and Technology Minister Daryl Vaz suggested that the committee carry out research to ascertain if a provision can be inserted in the bill to try and deter the practice. Foreign Minister Kamina Johnson-Smith says more than 2,000 Jamaicans who travelled to Panama between 2018 and March of this year were denied entry into the Central American country, while 81 were deported. For the same period, 143 Jamaicans were denied entry into Mexico in North America as the two countries ramp up efforts to limit illegal migration to the southern border of the United States. Mrs. Johnson-Smith made the disclosure on Wednesday, days after CARICOM member state Belize signaled that it would introduce a new travel policy for Jamaicans who were using that country as a transit point to get into the United States. The minister says having recognized that there are no direct flights to Mexico, Panama is the route traveled to get to both Mexico and Belize. But she says there is now a heightened immigration surveillance which is now affecting both travelers with lawful and unlawful intent. We are trying to be proactive and bring to the attention of Jamaicans that this is not a good decision to take. It is extremely risky for you personally, but it also affects uh, the, the reputation of our passports, which we have been working hard at strengthening. We are increasing the security within the passport, embedded in the passport, to ensure that it cannot be replicated, that um, our border control procedures are stronger, our customs processes are stronger. All of these things are to seek greater facilitation of movement with a Jamaican passport. And actions and decisions like this, they, they really do fight against the efforts of the government and they do affect the reputation of the passport and the immigration experience of our lawful travelers. The head of the St. Elizabeth Police Division, Superintendent Kenneth Chin, says cops operate under a policy which affirms the rights of citizens to record members while on duty. It was his first comment since one of his cops was caught on tape threatening 48-year-old businessman Boris Brown not to record him during an incident in Black River on March 27. But he declined to say whether the policeman was in breach of the policy. The video shows the irate cop advancing on Mr. Brown until a tussle developed. <laughs> Okay, I check them in. The Independent Commission of Investigations is probing allegations by Mr. Brown that the policeman grabbed him by the neck and forcibly took his phone to stop the video recording. The death of medical intern Bilal Abayomi, whose story of overcoming the odds resonated with Jamaicans last August, has left young medics shocked and grief-stricken. 
The 22-year-old reported the collapse on Tuesday. He was rushed to the University Hospital of the West Indies in St. Andrew, where he was placed in the intensive care unit. The doctor was subsequently declared brain dead and officially pronounced dead early Wednesday morning. A cause of death has not been reported. In a Gleaner interview last August, Dr. Abayomi was open about his struggles with mental health issues, depression and anxiety. The Nigeria-born Jamaican also shared his story of pushing to complete his final exams at the University of the West Indies, Mona, after surviving a sickle cell-related illness. And that's it for this edition of Jamaica Now, your weekly review of the big news stories. Send us your comments at online feedback at gleanerjm.com. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Jamaica Gleaner and on Facebook at Gleaner Jamaica. Like this video on our YouTube page, turn on your notification and subscribe today. I'm Jovan Johnson and before we go, we hear the story of ex-gangster turned artist Andrew Blaze Folks who will also talk about his book, The Power of Pain. It was my first gun in seventh grade. And seventh grade was just about gang life. And it was really just me trying to fit in somewhere, you know. In eighth grade, I was seen with a gun on the school. Left out of the house like I was going to school. And I was hiding perfectly in a manga tree for like three weeks, you know what I mean? Police were actually looking for me and some of the, the, the guys in the gang. And we just never knew how to talk to each other. And so moving back to Kingston or meeting could have been something nice. And it became like one of the times I start, one day if I got eight, I want to know. I got married to my long-time girlfriend in 2014 and three months after I got married I decided to walk away from music. The day that I started to write my book, you know, I was going to kill myself that day, like I swear. I'm going to sit down on the veranda and I said, bro, either I'm going to kill myself or I'm going to find a way out. I'm going to just take up a, a, a notebook and start writing. And that's how the book came about, The Power of Pain. I never have no money to publish the book. I never have no money to do nothing. But when I tell them, I say, I have a book launch. Like one week before, I say, I have the book launch. I don't know where the money I come from for doing nothing at all. But I still tell them, say, that day that I come out. You see me? Yeah, man. And I just fear to do it, you know. And it, it ended up for out. Come out, and the first 500 copies of the book, I get my giveaway. Every time I meet somebody, I try to sell a book, they tell them story. And I say, I have no money for you, but all the book here. Till you just find some 500 book gone. At first, 500 copies I get my gateway. Then I can't print back no more book after that. See? The power of pain is being a motivation while needing to be motivated, inspiring while needing to be inspired, you know, helping while needing help. You know what I mean? That is really the power of pain. It is doing good when good isn't the easiest thing to do.